It's a new year and a new year for gardening. Maybe your garden is buried under snow or maybe you're thinking about starting seeds in a few weeks. Maybe this is your first garden or perhaps you're an old pro. No matter where you are and what stage of gardening you're in, there's something to be done this month in the garden. Here is your January gardening checklist. If you live in a warm part of the country, you should be prepared for cold snaps and deep freezes. Should cold weather head your way, there are a few things you can do to prepare your plants for the cold, and one of the most effective seems a little strange. Water your plants well. If a freeze is coming, water your plants before the weather dips below 40 degrees. Well hydrated plants are more likely to survive sudden cold, and the moisture in the soil can insulate the roots and stems. Keep some frost cloth or even large black pots handy for those very cold nights too. It's surprising what a simple layer can do to keep your plants healthy. Knowing the average last frost date for your location is a critical tool for all gardeners. You can find this information on the NOAA website. Your average last frost date helps you know when it is probably safe to put out new plants and seedlings without being caught by frost. And those dates have changed in many places. Once you know your average last frost date, you can start to plan out when to plant seeds too. Check the seed packet for recommended methods and timing, which vary from variety to variety. Marking those dates on a calendar or planner can be very helpful if you are planning to start a lot of seeds this spring. Just count back the recommended number of weeks from your last frost date and you'll know when to start seeds. Once you know your last frost date, it's time to start thinking about your vegetable seed orders. Many veggies benefit from being started inside or in a polytunnel, a cold frame, or other season extender before your last frost date. That's particularly true for those of us living in parts of the country with late or unpredictable spring weather. Placing your veggie seed orders early will give you lots of time to get your seeds started and to make sure the varieties you want are available too. And don't forget the cardinal rule of vegetable growing. Grow what you like to eat. There's no point in growing something you won't actually enjoy. Need a healthy infusion of vegetables in your kitchen? This is a great time to start some microgreens and sprouts. Whether you have a dedicated sprouter, a mason jar, or a seed tray, using a microgreen or sprout seed mix makes quick work. And it's an easy source of nutritious greens at this time of the year. This is a wonderful project for young children too. They can see the changes in just a few days and can be eating what they grow quickly. Add sprouts or microgreens to salads, sandwiches, and other dishes. They're nutritious, fresh, and quick to grow. If you have a compost pile, be sure to keep an eye on it over the colder months. If you haven't had rain or snow in a few weeks, add some warm water on a day when it's above 40 degrees. Continue to balance your greens and browns if you feed the pile and keep turning your compost on a regular schedule. It will continue to decompose, maybe at a slower rate than in warm weather, but it's still working for you. If you have a period of dry weather for two to three weeks, look for a warmer day, over 40 degrees, and give your trees a good soak. Healthy trees need moisture even in the winter, and giving them a deep soaking during a dry spell can make all the difference come springtime. Younger trees need this deep watering even more than older established trees, so make sure any trees planted in the last three years get supplemental water during the winter months too. And that is your gardening checklist for January. Happy gardening and Happy New Year!